not an agreement to sanction around 20 Belarusians. We continue the process which was started during previous meetings, as we know, of foreign affairs ministers and also endorsed by heads of states and the process continues. Finalizing legal procedures, uh, probably the list could be extended, but the all, all picture will be clear maybe later today. So there's still discussions on the list today? There's always this discussions, all these aspects and problems overlapping, so this is an informal meeting how it should be, because it's no decisions, just just a common mood. So is it linked to the push by Greece and uh, Cyprus to have uh, EU sanctions on Turkey? I would not make this clear linkage, but uh, definitely everything is overlapping, all these problems and interests. Every country has own, so to say, emphasis on some, some other aspects, and as it should be. As I said, I'd like to emphasize that no decisions are supposed to be taken because it's the format of the meeting. But if you're talking about the mood, what about your mood then? Because you were saying we're not stepping forward fast enough. Concerning Belarus. No, the same as I said, I can repeat. I believe what is happening, it's uh, unprecedented, it's uh, intolerable, and uh, it uh, has no um, kind of uh, excuse for sovereignty or, or something like that. This is human rights or probably even uh, crime committed. So this is totally, should be thoroughly investigated, definitely, but we haven't seen any, any signals, any signs uh, for the redness of this de facto leadership. So, uh, definitely what we can do, we have to speed up our, so to say, uh, actions, not just, not just statements, not just assessments. And part of that could be sanctions of those who, who those responsible, least we can do, and uh, sending clear signals to the de facto leadership. Uh, also message of support, which is de desperately needed for the society. And also to other stakeholders, in particular Russia, not to intervene, not to invade because we have seen yesterday uh, that there were, again, statements about possible reserve forces ready to go, which is uh, not yet happening, but we cannot exclude. As I said previously, we cannot exclude uh, this uh, invasion, which will be covered by maybe uh, obligations of treaty, but we see and we know there's no legal, no military, no, no so to say, practical reasons uh, for uh, military intervention. So this is also important to send uh, appropriate message. So what do you what do you do to speed up your colleagues because they are trying to link it to other problems and then we kind of get stuck. Oh, it's exactly right? as is always. We're talking about everything, quite quite frankly and candid. And uh, as I said, so this is exactly what we are here. Why we are here? And talking about Russia, is the alleged poisoning of Alexei Navalny? Say, say, say again, please. Uh, talking about Russia, is the um, alleged poisoning of Alexei Navalny having any impact on your discussions here? I hope yes. Uh, this is a lamentable, unfortunate uh, tradition of KGB, in KGB spirit, and this is not first time happening. And I met recently Karamurza, Vladimir Karamurza, you know, and he said that it, the same symptoms he had experienced. So this is personal kind of uh, assessment, but we have to also take this uh, very seriously. I know that German authorities are doing, doing exactly the same. But we will discuss all picture, all, all spectrum of, of relations with Russia, and I see no ground to, for any changes so far. We really have to preserve this pressure and sanctions, because reasons for the sanctions uh, not disappeared at all. We have to balance selective engagement with uh, also contacts and cooperation and relations with civil society, which is not sufficiently happening in my view. And we have, uh, you know, uh, the business with the country, which is... Uh, living in the, in the, in the, in the, in the field, uh, very uncertain with regard to the international law. And they applying the selective approach, as we know, and after amendments in the Constitution, when supremacy of national law with regard to uh, international, especially in the field of human rights, uh, really puts the uh, country in a very, very uncertain situation. And we have to take into account, so Russia potentially can play a positive role in managing crisis, but unfortunately they're creating crisis. And, and through this crisis, uh, trying, trying to influence the situation. So it's not partnership by far. And what I'm trying to say, let's be realistic. Let's, uh, let's be not uh, guided by wishful thinking. Russia is a factor, should take into account. Uh, waste resources, time, but this is not partnership. And this is also important. So uh, we will discuss all aspects, but I hope our approach will be value-based, uh, based on principles, commitments, uh, which is very important to note in the context of Belarus, in the context of poisonings, and uh, you see, this is just, just bad examples lately. Uh, thank you. Thank you. When do you expect Mr. Lukashenko himself to be on the sanction list? 
I believe he has to be on the, on the list, but we will discuss. Maybe there are some tactical reasonings and uh, maybe some other people have another mind. So we'll see. We'll see. You don't expect him to be on the list now with the 20 people? I will not uh, be in a position now to answer the concrete questions about names, believe me, because we're just discussing. I can express my own opinion, but that's the least I can do.